Hello and welcome, my name is Trismegistus and today we're going to be reading through and speculating about the latest Factorio Friday Facts. Friday Facts 391 2023 Recap Posted by Vincenz and Raygard Hello, another year has come to an end. From all of us here we wish you good fortune in the year to come. Mod Portal Recap 2023 by Vincenz Hey, it's the end of 2023 and surprise surprise we're still counting mod downloads. While most of those downloads are via the built-in mod manager, some of you like to automate your Factorio installs with download scripts or docker containers. Some of them crash when updating their mods, then restart, download all the mods again, crash, restart, and after a short while it's very likely that the Factorio auth servers start ignoring the download script. So maybe this festive season is the time you'll remember your poor mini PC sitting in a forgotten closet mindlessly downloading Parama Mark III over and over again. In 2023 we had 676,651 engineers downloading 44,954,072 mods, 2,043 new mods and 7,832 mod updates. 1,368 active mod creators, supported by 105 collaborators. If you want to see a few stats about your personal mod portal usage, you can visit your personal recap here. Uh, I'm not going to click on that um, because I'd need to log into the, the, the site for one thing, uh, but also it's not actually going to be that interesting. I've kind of um, streamed most of my Victoria mods, so there's not a lot to show you there. Last year, we looked at how many different mods people usually download. For this year, I'd like to show you a bit about the diversity of mod uploads this year. The first chart shows the different categories of mod up mods up released in 2023. So that's the chart on the left. As you can see, tweaks are the majority of mods uh, that were released in 2023. And content was the next biggest category. Very similar numbers, actually, so about a third for each of those. The rest are much smaller breakdowns and we've got utilities is the next largest. We've got mods without a category and then you've got mod packs which is interesting, uh, localizations, overhauls and scenarios with uh, quite small percentages there. Scenarios are quite difficult to create. There is that one scenarios mod which is basically like a, a campaign for Factorio um, and I suspect that's probably the majority of the downloads for that. But it's interesting that tweaks are the biggest update, uh, biggest number of mods release, released. I guess that partly reflects the fact that uh, the game is so mature. But saying that, you've then got the next category is content. So um, clearly a lot of people feel that they were, they're quite hungry for extra content, which is you know a good sign that the, the um, expansion would do quite well. The second chart shows all the 2023 player downloads grouped by mod category. It confirms the cliche that people are only here for the content and I should have prepared these charts for mod tags instead. So the chart on the right is uh, the second chart, um, downloads per category in 2023. And we see that, as was mentioned, 51% of the downloads are for content downloads. That's obviously disproportional to the, the number of mods that were up, up, you know, made available. But interestingly, utilities is the next biggest and it's only third for the tweaks. So although tweaks are the most published mods, it's the tweaks that are only in third place. I suspect that's probably because there are a lot of tweaks that are essentially the same. I, I mean, I, and I've seen it before that there are quite a few tweak mods that basically mod existing mods. So they'll make a tweak like making angels, I don't know, easier or something like that. But you also then get quite a lot of repeats of those same tweaks. Um, which, you know, I say is makes the mod portal a bit bit tricky to navigate, if I'm honest. You get a lot of mods that are kind of, you know, pointless or really only, you know, for edge cases of, of a particular, you know, mod. I suspect if you take this out, if you took out tweaks, the grass would look a bit sim bit more similar. But yeah, we'd have to we'd have to kind of work through that. And I guess it also depends slightly on what they mean by released. So if you update your your mod pack, does that count as a new release? I suspect it probably does. Um, but then also, you know, as we know, people want more Factorio, basically. You finish the game, you, you know, you want more of it. And you probably also want some tools to help you with bits that you personally didn't didn't like or felt were a bit pointless, that sort of thing. Mod Portal Changelog 2023 by Vincenz. This year, we continued our quest of improving discoverability. First, we added the Automagical Highlights page. Every week, it tries to be smart about picking an interesting selection of mods. It works okay, but it's still in an experimental stage where we haven't decided where to take it next. So this is the highlights page. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't really even know this existed. It's not mentioned as a Friday Facts. Maybe they just did it. But yeah, I don't 
remember this. Um, I think I might start checking it out, to be honest with you, because there's some interesting mods I've never kind of heard of. <laughs> Bob's Logistics, that's a fairly sample one, but Fuel or Exotic Industries. So yeah, so popular mods in the Scenarios category, great mods tagged with Storage, top mods in the Tweaks category. So yeah, so it looks like it recommends a bunch. I mean, it's got loads and loads of pages here as well, look, up to 51, which... Assume means it basically re recommends them all. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't really even know this existed. I mean, maybe I did, but I'd forgotten about it. I don't know. A bit later, we reworked the mod portal search and launched the explore page. It provides a fast search as you type experience with Facing. Don't really know what Facing is. Um, it's a. I looked it up on Wikipedia. It seems to be something to do with polygons, but uh, I don't know that one. But this is the explore page. But yes, yeah, so, you know, it gives the. You know, the categories and I'm assuming the facing is something to do with the search algorithm so if you wanted to search for I don't know um, well there's that other one so fuel or something like that um, then it's presumably doing a, a smart search of some description we also did quite a bit of behind the scenes work some of which I want to highlight here when imager started deleting images in April Senki built a system which automatically rehosts external images posted on mod pages or discussions, thus preserving old screenshots and improving load times. So the link that's there is just a link to a news article, uh, basically explaining, you know, images started deleting random, you know, untitled and basically explicit content from its site. To reduce costs, we migrated the explore page from Algolia to Miley Search. Miley Search? Miley Search? I don't know either of those. I assume they're alg algorithms or hosting sites, maybe. We changed our mod storage from an SFTP-based solution to a S3-like object storage. This should improve the availability of mod uploads and endpoint. And this is just linking to some people who've got the error uh, that they weren't able to upload their mod, basically. So these are all back-end things, really. Um, I confess, I've never done any web stuff. I've never done any web development. Um, so I'm able to chip in a bit and give some interpretations of more like pure code things. Web stuff is is not just something I'm just not familiar with at all. So so yeah, <laughs> I lost with some of these. But but yeah, so it, you know, basically just highlighting they've done some some back-end improvements. Mod Manager Improvements by RayGuard Modding is an integral part of Factorio and we have put tremendous effort into providing a good mod management experience. However, third party mods have always been secondary to the base game work. So while the experience is good, it is not great and there are many points of friction that have remained unsolved. Starting with 2.0, we will ship the game with multiple built-in mods, so the mod manager and dependency management have now fallen under the base game experience umbrella. Due to my extensive mod experience, I have a personal interest in improving mod management for both users and modders, and I am intimately familiar with the pain points of the current system. I created a laundry list of my biggest wishes and frustrations and took it upon myself to begin solving them. So if you weren't aware, Rayguard is actually the author of Crestoria 2, which is the mod, the overhaul mod that most people um, recommend starting with if you're, if, you start, if you're looking at doing overhaul mods. Um, I've actually done a playthrough on, on this channel, so you can have a look at that. Well, it was a, a live streaming series and, and the, the VODs are on the channel. But also they, you know, they created the Factoria library, which a lot of mods use. It's basically, as it says, commonly used utilities, and it's got like math functions in it and stuff. But they also did... A rate calculator, I'm not sure it's the one I use. I think it might be the, the other version. But they've done, you know, a rate calculator and all sorts of very useful mods. Task disk is one of theirs. I did sometimes wonder if... Because, you know, it is possible to work out who some of the mods are, uh, so who some of the devs are, or, you know, you know sometimes they, they actually state sort of thing uh, in the Friday Facts. And kind of going through and seeing what mods they've done, because, you know, there's this thing that, you know, Space Age is sort of SpaceX, but a kind of lighter version. If you go through some of the, these are clearly the ideas and things that the mods, uh, so the developers, have thought about and, you know, may have you know become candidates in a sense for inclusion you know so look if you look at this you know there's blueprint tools tools for manipulating blueprints swap wire colors set tiles quick grid configuration hotkey spiritual spiritual successor to successor to blueprint extensions and it's things like that it's like we know we're getting improved blueprints that allow you to edit the blueprints so what other things that are in you know these mods that 
you know, some of the developers have done are actually going to sneak their way into the game. It's going to be quite interesting. And like train groups, trains assigned to the same group will have the same schedule, include support for train control signals. That's, you know, we've literally just a couple of weeks ago had an up Friday facts that is train groups, basically, or includes train groups. And that was only released, you know, two months ago. So either it's been <laughs> inspired by what they've been doing, and that's like, well, this is how you could do it in the base game and giving it to people earlier. Or it's like older idea maybe that they've they've then worked in, but yeah, I, I did wonder if it would be worth going through some of these and trying to work out maybe you know some of the things that might come in. Mod dependency errors. Picture this: you have just figured out your mod list for a new playthrough of Crash Story 2, and you start a new game. Unbeknownst to you, you accidentally enabled the Power Armor Mark 3 mod. That's taking a lot of wet welly that might Power Armor Mark 3 mod, which Crash Story 2 has marked as incompatible. It takes until an hour into the playthrough for you to realise that the Crashtorio 2 content is missing and now you have to throw out the save and start over from scratch. This is a situation that I have personally experienced numerous times both as a player and as a mod author. In 1.1 the game does not inform you when conflicts occur but instead just silently loads the mods that it can and carries on. The reason it does that is to stop it because the you know he's about to explain why, why that's a problem but the flip side of it is that if it didn't, if it continuously flagged up, you've not got this mod, you've not got, there's a good dependency, you've not got this mod, it would get really annoying, you know, so there is a reason that it's like this, but it's not, you know, and it's sort of not a perfect solution, basically, is the point, because, you know, it does have this this uh, this error. Uh, this has caused many mod authors to shy away from requiring dependencies altogether, and users to complain when the mod has a lot of dependencies. Issues surrounding this are so commonplace that SpaceX implemented their own dependency error system that informs users which mods are missing. Factorio 2 will inform you when dependency errors occur and will not allow the game to load until they are resolved. And here we have the screen capture of the message it gives you. So in this case, it's saying it's failed to load mods, space exploration, missing required dependency, space exploration graphics, and then the version number, dependency, space exploration graphics 2, um, is not satisfied, active space exploration graphics 2.12. Uh, so basically it's saying the version you've got is not up to date enough to, to run the mod. Mods to be disabled, space exploration 0.6.1.2. <laughs> yeah, so basically the version number. So it's giving you a bunch of options, I think, is the real solution to this. But now it's giving you options as to what to do. You know, it's saying disable the listed mods or disable all the mods or manage the mods or restart or exit. And that's that's really the new bit, I think, that it's giving you those options. Configure, restart, configure, restart. Now that we have proper dependency errors, we need to improve the workload for, for resolving them. In 1.1, you are given two options with an, when an error occurs. Disable the affected mods or disable all mods. If resolving the issue required enabling mods, changing active mod versions or updating mods, then you first need to disable mods to allow the game to load before you can access the mod manager GUI to resolve them. It was so annoying for my modding workflow that I wrote a command line mod manager to avoid the constant game restarts. The link there is just to, to that on GitHub, basically. The solution was simple. In 2.0, I added a new manage mods button that allows full access to the mod manager GUI, including all mod portal functionality. You can see it in the screenshot above. And I say that I think is the real change there, adding that on to let you manage those mods rather than forcing you to do one or the other, which requires multiple restarts, and then you're back to square one. I imagine that's when they're talking about the uh, modding workflow, that's kind of what they're talking about, is that if you're a mod, you know, modder, you're writing your mod, you want to just test it quickly, and it's got dependencies, or it's broken in some way, or something like that, then that process of, like, continuously restarting, as it shows there, with the configure, restart, configure, restart, is just, like, really a waste of time. Installing mods. In 1.1, the install tab for, of the mod manager is relatively simple. You have a list of mods with some basic sorting and filtering options and an info pane to show mod details. The game fetches the entire mod list and creates the entire table at once, leading to noticeable performance issues and nigh unusable performance when the game is in debug mode. With the advent of the new Explore page on the Mod Portal website, the usability difference between the Mod Portal website and the in-game mod browser has grown even larger. I have settled into a workflow of searching for a mod on the website and only searching for it in-game after I've found the mod I need. 
Wouldn't it be nice if the game had the same experience with all of the same searching and filtering capabilities? 2.0 features an all new Explore tab that does just that. So I showed you earlier the Explore tab. It sounds like the Explore tab is new then. I don't know how new, but this is the, the Explore tab that we just just you know uh, talking about up above and I've obviously done a search for fuel there uh, from earlier but it's basically saying that's make that's going into version 2.0 in in the actual you know when you're searching for mods it can do all of the searching that this has um, so we can do these content I guess it's up to you to flag it for I guess that's how it works. I mean I've never done any uh, modding info. I'd love to to give it a go if I had the time but I think some of the I think it's you decide what you want to call it because I wouldn't have called this a content mod I'd have called it like a tweak or, or you know, something like that. Well, I suppose it is content in a sense. Hmm. All buildings are more efficient. You know, that's not a content update. That's a, you know, um, a tweak or a utility, I guess. Hmm. So I guess it's up to you to define what, what you, you know, what you feel is a content or a tweak or a utility. Yeah, so, and this is just, the, you know, the image says, uh, Note, by filtering by bookmarked mods um, has not been implemented in the new GUI, but will be there for the 2.0 release. Yeah, so it's, it's just basically showing a more a more advanced, um, you know, uh, mod. Cargo Shoops is a great mod. <laughs> there are several considerations I had to make when implementing this new interface. The 1.0 method of fetching the entire mod list every time was not a great solution for performance and network usage reasons, and would involve re-implementing the complex search algorithms client-side in C++. This would lead to inevitable differences between the website search and in-game search, which would not make for a great user experience. On the other hand, implementing a mod portal search API would ensure parity between the website and in-game search results. We went with the server-side approach. To get the project up and running quicker, I chose to implement a mock server in Go that would fetch data from existing mod portal APIs and serve it in the new format. Thanks to Go's built-in HTTP libraries and very easy to, to use JSON parsing, parsing, it only took a few hours to get this server up and running on my laptop. As I implemented the Explore GUI, I was able to freely adjust the API as needed without taking up any DevOps time. This allowed me to take my time doing much needed uh, cleanup and refactoring of the mod manager GUI to make the explore tab easier to implement and pave the way for more changes in the future. Again, it's getting into web stuff that I'm not that familiar with. I think what the, the sort of issue they're talking about with this experience for the user, basically it's kind of downloading the entire mod list every time you do anything in the mods, which is why if you ever used it in game, it's really slow and, and clunky. But also there seems to be an issue that basically because of how the algorithms are done, I mean, I'd assume they'd be the same, but maybe there's some, you know, because of this smart explore thing it was talking about, you know, that smartness, I guess, is going to get different results depending on where you're searching. And so what they prefer to have is a single smart searcher uh, and then use a, an API, you know, to, to basically query it from anywhere. And so it's always doing the same search, you know, with the same variables, the same weightings and all whatever it's using. It's just you're just querying it from different places. Once the client side implementation was complete, it was up to Vincennes to implement the real API. Thanks to the robustness of the mock server, only a few issues were found during testing against the real API and merging the features went relatively smoothly. Future plans. I feel that these changes have fixed my largest grievances with mod management. My laundry list is far from complete, but in the interest of getting 2.0 out to you all as soon as possible, the majority of my plans will have to wait until later versions. Stay tuned for more to come. As always, send post requests with your feedback to the usual places. That's a bit inside baseball, that one, uh, that reference, because a post is, is an API term, basically. So if you... Um, there's basically fetch and post. So an API is an application programming interface. Um, and essentially it's like a way in which you're, it's, it's, it depends how you want to define it, but basically a, an API is like a block of code essentially, and it will do certain functions, you know, return certain values, accept certain values, depending on how you set it up. And basically the standard ones like, you know, post and, and, and fetch and fetch is literally, you know, send me the data and post is you're sending it data. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's what that gag is basically that post request is just used, you know, as if you were an API and you were posting uh, data to the API and it would, you know, go onto the forum because you were sending the, the data to the API.
Okay, speculation. So I'm, I'm kind of aware. I'll be honest. I was expecting some kind of post like this for the the Fractorio, for, you know, for the Friday facts for this week between Christmas and New Year. They've kind of done roundups before, and uh, and on based on you know looking at the the mod downloads. So I didn't. I hadn't guessed it would be this, but I remember seeing these before, and it wasn't unexpected that we get something like this. So it's not really new, you know, space age content. It's an update to the to the mod portal. I think this all sounds really good. In terms of speculation, so it's really difficult to speculate about this. One of the things I did think is that, you know how we're getting lots of groupings? So we're getting logistics groupings and train groupings. That would be very useful, I think. And it's effectively mod packs, but like a way of doing it almost more officially. Crash Dorio 2, I think, has a, even that has a couple of, you know, parts to it. But, you know, bobs and angels and those sorts of things. Being able to more easily show, because particularly when you search for bobs or angels, you want the you know the base mods, you know by, you know Archangel three whatever it's six 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 and uh, bobbing about, they're what you want. I guess you may with the search be able to search for users' names. It doesn't look like it, but you know maybe you know maybe I'm wrong on that. But it would be good, for, you know, if Bob could basically. You know, and or angels, or you know, Rayguard for Crash Story Two could uh, effectively create. I don't know about a tagging, but like a grouping system, so that you can get all of the mods in a particular group. And I say it is sort of mod packs, but you know, they're a bit rubbish, and a lot of them are done by people who want to include extra mods in their playthrough. So you can sort of do it with tags, maybe, and you could work around the system, but. Some sort of, particularly for overhauls, you know, sort of grouping them together with, with other mods that you want, you know, in, in your particular, you know, set. Some sort of, um, shall we say, moderation on what people, you know, classify things as would be good. I don't know how you would do it, though. It would, it would take quite a lot of time, I think, uh, for, you know, to do them. The sort of problem with the mod portal for me at the moment is there's just so much on it. Um, and... I guess this explore thing, I hadn't realised this, you know, this is new, but something like this that, um, you know, the highlighted mods maybe that um, let you sort of see more quickly what's going on, because there are literally, what, thousands of mods now? Um, and a lot of them are the same thing. And it's sort of, it's great, but it also makes searching it and working, you know, working out what you want a real pain. So yeah, that was all I really had for the this week's Friday Fact. So I couldn't really think of a lot to speculate about. I say there is the thing I mentioned that I might do is go through some of the mod, uh, developers and see what mods they've introduced, given that, you know, Regus basically introduced the, the train groups thing, which we know is coming in version 2.0. So there may be a few little hints in there, but it would take quite a long time, I think, to go through that. What I did want to pick up on, just to finish this off, is in last week's video... I'd so I'd actually spot I cut it out. Um, I'd spotted that certainly this building didn't wasn't familiar to me. So this is uh, obviously last week's uh, Friday facts, and there's a building here on the right. Can I zoom in anymore? I think I can. Uh, the building on the on the left here, sorry, um, which is I think is the blue building from the tees. So when we got this tees, I think this building here is this building here. Um, it's a slightly different design to it, ish, but that's what you'd expect. You know, this is an icon, I think, from the, you know, when you're doing the research or whatever, or, you know, when it's showing you the in the menu in the game. And then this is the asset in, in the game world. Yeah, the big difference is that this doesn't have the art, what appears to be some kind of arm on it. Um, this appears to be some sort of arm uh, that, you know, is on the front of it. But if you look at this sort of detail here with the, you've got a couple of wires in the thing, um, with the, the sort of, um, what do you call it, like sticking outy bit, you know, that that is. Then you've got this sort of shape here, almost sort of a, you know, a curve to it. Oh, it's actually two, two straight, two bits, and it's that. Um, you've uh, got, you know, that sort of vertical part there, which I think is underneath that. To me, it just looks a lot like this here but with an arm in front of it of some description. Now, that could be a new thing in and of itself, because, I mean, we can't see it. You know, it's having an inserter go, you know, putting stuff into it, but it could be some sort of built-in inserter or something like that. The other one is this one on the bottom here. 
This is less clear because you've got pipe type work that is reminiscent of, you know, fuel, uh, sorry, oil refineries and chemical plants and stuff like that. Um, and as I say, I did spot this when I was doing my original notes, but I then sort of went, maybe I just can't tell what it is. Um, but then as I was going through the, you know, the edit, I was like, that is definitely a new building. And then I realized this one was was new as well. Now, given we've got the foundry here, this is, you know, the foundry. And we've known we know about the foundry. We've got that image there. And notice, obviously, as well, this is like conceptually what this is. You know, you've got that pipe shape there. Yeah that pipe shape there but it's not exactly the same and that's why what leads me to think that this is this building because it's not exactly the same but it's sort of conceptually the same sort of idea the other new one was this one down here on the on the bottom bottom left um, and I suspect that's the green building because you know we've got the orange building the blue building and the green building I think this is much more different to this and that's why it's more speculative but you look at this pipe shape here this curvy pipe going on there and then this has got the curvy pipe I you know I think it's a new building whether it is a tease of this I don't know or whether it could be that this has advanced quite a lot you know and it's not like that anymore uh, this does also have I don't know if you can tell but there's like a gray part here that is obviously something kind of attaching to this you know what we call it who module um, and that could easily be these types of pipes here so I think if, if this is the green building then it is you know um, some way on from from this one but equally as I say these seem to be you know the blue one seems to be different if it is the blue one if they're not the blue and the green building if there's something else then I still think they are teases of a new of new buildings you know be they different new buildings to the one we've already seen um, the other thing is I'm not sure if this isn't new as well this could easily be the like the other side of this so if you imagine that structure is kind of you know here maybe so it could well be part you know the other side to this i you know i'm that's a real guess we've got too much snow on it and, and other things so yeah i i suspect you know we're just getting teased these new buildings but this could be something as well because i did not recognize it but we're seeing so little of it you know, it could just be a, a chemical plant or something like that that I just don't recognise. But I'm what I say. I'm my, you know, having because one of the things I, I I posted on Reddit a few times, sort of saying there are these new buildings, and nobody was really had, had said anything on Reddit. But then I looked on the Discord, which I don't I don't tend to hang out on Discord, and people had you know seen them and speculated about them on there. So it wasn't I wasn't going completely mad. That was what I was a bit worried about. Um, in that nobody, you say when no one's posting on Reddit about something, you sort of tend to think, well, am I just seeing things? Is that you know my imagination? Uh, but yeah, I think these are the new buildings. The bit I would add as new, and I say I, so. What I did, I chopped it into the edit because it was already like nine o'clock when I was I was adding that in. So I just thought I'd talk about them here. One of the things I would sort of point out. I mean, this might not be attached. It might be a separate thing. It, in fact, it may probably is because you know of where that is. But this looks like it's attaching to a chemical plant, the green one. So that tends, to, and this does look fluidy. So it looks like green may be something to do with you know fluid processing in some way, and the and the blue one as I say just you know no real in indication, but we do know that whatever's on this belt is being put into an assembler and then put into the blue machine. So that suggests that it whatever it does requires some pre-processing in some description, just as this requires some. Excuse me, this would be heavy oil. Well, we can now we're going to be able to flip oil refineries. So. We don't definitely know what it is, but if that was like heavy oil being turned into lube and then turned into something else, maybe? I don't know. So that's one one thought on it. I am going to work on the extra, you know, the wild speculation video. I've not managed to find the time to do that um, during this, this period. It took me a long time. I basically did all the new setup. This is, you know, the first one from my new setup uh, with the, the good camera. So you can see how pale I am, actually. <laughs> Again, Cameron distorts my colour and makes me seem healthy. <laughs> um, so, and that's just taken ages, and I'm I'm not finished. There's a whole pile of junk over in the corner there that I need to sort out. But yes, yeah, so that video will happen, but it's going to be a while, I think.
but yeah, so the other thing I did want to point out, just as an extra piece of speculation, and it's not really speculation, I think, it's more a logical deduction, is that, you know, this was the foundry, okay, and it's orange, and it turned out that what it was doing was giving us, effectively, giving us extra production, okay? We then got a green building and a blue building. Now, in the game, that orange, green, blue trifecta, that orange, green, blue pattern is orange production, green efficiency and blue speed okay now you could kind of then think well if this is an electricity thing you know overclocking more power it could be something to do with that it could be something like that i still think they're they are all production buildings and so what i suspect is that this is actually uh well first off i think this is on the lightning planet um, and I think this is on the bio planet, and this is obviously on Volcanus, the production planet. And I think what it gives you is aluminium as a resource. I think it processes aluminium because the aluminium uses electricity in the real world. But also, I think that is then used in some speed-related way. This this has an inherent speed boost to it. So where this is, has an inherent production boost, this has an inherent speed boost. And this will have an inherent efficiency boost. And the reason I think that is, you know, you've got lots of spare power, presumably, on this lightning planet that we're all speculating about. And so that is like the way of harnessing electricity in this building, that when it gets zapped by electricity or maybe there's a you know, a lightning rod or something like that, that gives you a massive boost to its, its speed of production for a short period of time. Um, and you can use those lightning blasts to zap production and, and it will be an inconsistent speed. So it'll produce maybe one a minute just as a random number. And then when it's zapped by electricity, it produces two a minute. And the efficiency one is more difficult to guess. I think I say that's on the, the bio planet. And I don't know what it processes. I think it processes something organic or, you know, oil based or something like that. It's fluid based production. What that means in terms of efficiency, I don't know. The only thing I could think of was that, I'd, and I say I don't know what would trigger it is the thing because of the because it's this alien life form planet. I, I say I don't know what the triggering thing would be, and I say it's more difficult to see. But I think it's like it, in effectively it's the inverse of this because an efficiency really is about reducing power production, and I suspect that this planet is like meant to be really hostile, and perhaps it's you know one of the furthest from the sun or something, or you know it's quite far from the sun maybe, and so it doesn't let you do much solar. They were also talking that about last Friday facts about using those bridges and you know islands, and I what that was a random thing they seemed to be talking about, and I wondered maybe if this planet always produces islands rather than big continents you know even if you set the water to really high at uh, really low it'll still produce islands of you know with lots of water on and therefore you don't have much space without being able to do like tons of landfilling uh, and maybe it doesn't have stone on it so that's really difficult and therefore what you really want is you want as much stuff out of as little power you know demand as possible so you know you can't build great big power production areas because you can't really landfill the place and you're better off using the land for production and it could involve sort of some sort of gardening mechanic if you think about it from that point of view in that you you want this land to be wild land because that's how you get the trees or what have you that produce the resource therefore you don't want to landfill you know you don't want to completely cover the place in solar panels because then you'll have no no you know no resource to 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 use I mean, it could could be fluid wells, you know, it could be everywhere is covered in oil sort of thing um, would be the equivalent. And so you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, put solar panels all over your, your oil. And so that's why you want efficiency, because you want as much production out of as little power generation as you can. It's a bit thin, I think. <laughs> but, I, you know, there also seem there's been a couple of times where they've talked about using efficiency modules. And I think it's something they're trying to fix in the game, in that efficiency, nobody uses efficiency for anything, basically. And I think they want to basically force everyone to have some reason to use it. You could not do, but, you know, um, some reason to use it, and I think that's it. So that's a sort of a, a preview speculation, because there wasn't much to this in terms of speculation. That's a preview of the type of thing I'm going to talk about in the main video that I'm working on. 
Hope you enjoyed today's Friday Facts video and might consider coming back for another one. If you want to chat about the latest Factorio Friday Facts, then you can find me live stream Factorio every Saturday over my Twitch channel at Twitch Magistus. Thanks for watching. Cheers.